Hi, my name is Jeff Thibodeau. I'm a real estate broker, real estate brokerage owner, and also an active real estate developer and investor here in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. My investment team is called HBTN. You can check out our website at hbtn.ca to see all the projects we do and other videos we create. But today's video is specifically around the home flipping equation and how it makes flipping a home almost automatic, right? There's still a lot of work to do, but it makes the win automatic and lets you know how to buy a winning project. We're gonna go into all that today, so stay tuned, right? Just before we get into it, quick little disclaimer, I'm making this video in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. That's where I'm an expert. That's where I own a brokerage. That's where my license is. That's where I do my projects, and that's where uh, I know what I'm talking about. If you're here in Ontario, um, you still should be taking my video and then going and building your own team with your own advisors because every investment is unique, every market is unique, and every deal is going to be unique. And I only know what I've been exposed to. So make sure um, if you're learning something from this, you take it to go build out a team. You don't just listen to what I'm saying here and go put your money on the line. Uh, of course, if you're from outside of Ontario or down in the States, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you listen to this through the filter of your own local rules, regulations, and taxes and fees. Okay, so let's move on from that. Uh, last but not least, if you like this video and it's bringing you some value, please take two seconds, double tap it, hit the like button, leave me a comment, share it on your feed, or um, definitely subscribe or follow on one of my public uh, social media channels, especially YouTube. Really appreciate it, guys, and thanks for following along on this journey. Okay, let's get to this um, presentation, short and sweet. Here's the flip equation, right? You can pause this video, you can screenshot it if you need it. I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. So the profit left over at the end of the project is going to be equal to the price you sell the home for minus everything else you see on this list. So the cost to sell the house, the actual purchase price you paid for the house, all the costs to buy it and acquire it, all the costs paid out to develop and renovate it, and then all the costs, again, to hold it month after month after month, depending on how long your project is. If you can calculate all these different areas uh, properly, then you will mathematically know that you have a winning project. And I'm actually gonna show you at the end of the video how to turn this equation around using a little bit of uh, high school algebra so that you can actually reverse engineer what your best, or we call it your maximum buy price would be on any given project. And that way you never uh, buy a financial loser, right? So stay tuned to the end for that. We're gonna go line by line here, but get into the costs, right? So the buying costs are pretty straightforward, although some people forget to account for ones that can add up to be significant dollars. Remember, any dollar that's not accounted for is eventually gonna come out of your profit. If you forgot to put something in the equation, at the end of the day, it's gonna come out of your profit column because it has to be accounted for. So when you're buying a house, obviously we have the purchase price of the property, that one's most obvious. But we also could have additional costs we have to make sure in there. Um, if you're paying a professional home inspector, you could have a few hundred dollars um, or more, depending if you're having to do septic inspections or anything environmentally related. Um, and your financers or your mortgage companies may put the cost of appraising the property on you too. So make sure you understand these and if they are gonna be applicable to your deal, you put them in there. Again, it could add, add up to $1,000 or more, and if you don't put it in there, it's coming out of your pocket. Um, the big one is land transfer tax. Here in Ontario, it's calculated using a kind of semi-complex equation. You can find great calculators online on bank websites or mortgage websites. Um, just know that there's certain land transfer tax paid by the buyer anytime you're acquiring a piece of real estate. Now, that's true here in Ontario. There also could be additional taxes on top of that um, a one-time fee, right, paid to your municipality if you live in Toronto. And so this is different than your annual property taxes. This is a one-time tax on the value of the house you're buying that you just have to pay off to the government. Then you also have to hire your own closing team. So here in Ontario, that's usually a, uh, a lawyer and a solicitor. And that's going to cost you, you know, anywhere between $1,000 and $1,500. Of course, we're not going to use exact numbers today because it all is market dependent. Um, but just to give you a little bit of an idea, and then your loans may have an upfront component to them. This is the other thing to understand, and we're gonna do many more videos on financing these deals, but a traditional mortgage uh, through a bank for your own house, um, because you're signing up for five years with a, with a 25 year period, um, they don't usually charge you upfront fees, but if you're doing a kind of home flipping loan or a more short term loan, uh, that, that lender is not making enough money on the interest to make it uh, worth the risk for them because it could be a, such a short-term loan, it's only three or six months. So they typically charge 
additional fees up front, and the mortgage broker who sets up the deal may charge you an upfront fee also. So it's really important to understand that these fees exist and make sure they're in your equation because if they're surprises, again, um, and it's a couple thousand dollars worth of surprises, all that is coming out of your profit column by the day um, you actually sell this project. So really important to go over all this stuff and make sure you understand each of these line items and how to calculate it for your market and where you can look this uh, data up really quickly. Have those sites bookmarked in your browser. Okay, the next area of the flip equation where there's a lot of costs um, is in actually selling the project. And a lot of people don't put this into their equation at first because they kind of think of it as a separate thing. But remember, the, the, the project isn't done until you know it's sold and you've got that check from another buyer. So we have to make sure that if we are gonna use a professional realtor, you understand what the going rates are uh, and how much it's gonna cost you and what services you're gonna get for that. Um, so it's gonna, you know, in a typical market, it's a percentage of the sale price. Of course, if you're gonna do a private deal or do something off market, that fee might be reduced. Um, again, you may want to do an inspection or an appraisal of the property on the way out the door. Um, so that's going to be your cost again if you're going to do that. Um, and the seller also needs to hire a lawyer, a closing uh, team, a little bit different price again. So make sure you get a quote from your lawyer. One area um, where people don't account for is reading the fine print of the loans you got. So again, making sure that if there are any fees to get out of your mortgages or loans early, you account for those. You're not surprised by them, okay? And most traditional residential mortgages have significant break fees. If you're getting the proper type of mortgage or you're, you're doing it on a line of credit or something, you might not have break fees. So it could add up to thousands of dollars if you calculate it wrong though. So make sure you understand, are you allowed to pay off these loans early? Or if you pay them off early, are you gonna incur any penalties and make sure that's in the equation, right? And last but not least, you might have to outfit the house uh, on the way out, depending on your partnership with your real estate team, but maybe you're putting in some furnishings, appliances, right? Some extra landscaping at the end, um, potentially hiring home stagers or filling the home with rental furniture and paying for your own photo and video. Again, this all depends on your relationship with your real estate team, how much of it you're doing yourself versus what they're doing for you. Um, but you need to understand all this because it, you, as you can see, this could add up to thousands of dollars and quickly turn what you thought was a winning project over into a losing project. Okay, we're gonna take a quick pause here to talk about a concept. ARV is the, uh, the acronym you're gonna hear thrown around a lot when you're talking about flipping a house. And what this means is the after repair value of a property. Um, and so that means what the home will be worth once you've done all your renovations. And honestly, this is the key skill of a smart real estate investor is being able to predict the proper ARV when you buy a project and also know what renovations you're gonna to need to do to get there, right? So the easiest way to predict your ARV is to actually study the higher end of the markets that you're shopping in. Um, a lot of people who are looking for development projects they're only ever shopping in the bottom end of the market, right? So I encourage you to be out there um, looking at the other higher end prices, going on showings of those houses, checking out the open houses, um, so that you're really educated on what the top end of the market is, so you understand what features, finishes, layout changes, um, and style are kind of expected at that price point. And now we really have to take what we know is the potential of that house, and then put a plan together on how to renovate the house up to that potential. And that's where the, the real flip equation all comes together. So when you're thinking ARV, understand that that's the after repair value um, in today's market. What we believe that home can be worth and the features and finishes we need to get it to, to make it worth that, okay? And that's how we start our analysis. Now, the reason I brought that up right now is because I wanna give you one of my killer secrets, absolute killer secrets to never buy a losing project is always look for instant equity. In fact, if our, no matter how much of a renovation slam dunk a project looks like, if my team isn't buying something with instant equity, then we just pass, right? Because instant equity is our get out of jail free card. And how that works, it means that the price I'm buying it for, okay, is less than the current market value, but also less than the current market value minus all my buying costs and all my selling costs. And why is this important? Well, this gives me a get out of jail free card because it means even if I buy this house and do nothing to it, I should be able to just sell it and get out of it, right? Break even or potentially even more. That gives you exit number one. 
Um, exit number two, you could even try to assign it before you close. And because you bought it under market value, you could actually sell it to another flipper. This is called wholesaling for that, you know, extra five, 10, $15,000. So that gives you an exit number two. And then number three is if you decide to go ahead with this project, you've already got a bunch of your costs already accounted for and taken care of. And now you've got a lot more room to do exciting renovations. So stay disciplined and always look for a property with instant equity and you calculate that again, it's my buy price needs to be less than the market value minus the buy cost and minus the sell cost. And a quick rule of thumb here guys is about seven and a half, seven and a half percent or more below market value, right? So what, what it should be worth. Um, and you're like, how do I do that? Well, there's all kinds of ways, right? You, you can, we'll have in a whole nother video about where to find these deals, but believe me, they're everywhere. Um, my team exclusively buys properties with instant equity. It's our number one investment strategy. If you do this, almost everything else can take care of itself and little mistakes or problems that come along the way are a lot less stressful. Okay, the next on our equation is estimating the renovation costs. And if you're not a professional contractor renovator, then you need to partner with one because we need to be able to get our estimations in advance, get those plans committed, right? Understand the cost of features and finishes, and so that as we're doing the project, we're sticking to that budget, right? Um, we wanna make sure that our renovations are ROI positive. So a little rule of thumb I like is that if I am spending $1 on a renovation, it should be improving the property by $2 at least, right? And that's just a rule of thumb that gives you enough profit room to cover all these other costs. But make sure that you start with a plan so that as surprises happen, you make decisions that keep you on budget. We don't just keep adding more money, renovating more, right? We wanna start with a fixed renovation plan, a fixed budget, and if surprises happen, then we're gonna to have to make a, a trade-off and try to stay on budget and, and get that house to the ARV. If we treat the renovation just like an open, you know, an, an open book that we just have to keep working until we get it, that's how a lot of people treat their personal homes, right? We just you know, keep spending, keep spending and until I like it enough. We can't do a flip project like that. It has to be done. Um, under strict mathematical guidelines. So make sure that you do your rental in advance, you have a great estimation in advance, a great plan, and then we work day in and day out to stay on plan. Once the project started, this is our number one goal is to keep the rental costs on budget. Okay, uh, getting close to the end here, the hold costs are one that are a little bit harder to calculate because they are variable. So what you wanna do is actually calculate the hold costs on a monthly basis. So you might know what your taxes are for uh, the year or your utilities per quarter, but we kind of want to divide things back in the equation and understand what are my holding costs per month. And basically what you have in there is your property taxes, your utilities, your um, insurance payment, which, uh, you know, double check, it's going to be higher on a vacant property or on a construction project than your house. Doesn't make sense, right? Um, because you're tearing the house apart, but it's much more likely to be vandalized or, or be uh, you know, a, a problem site with nobody living in it. So you wanna calculate all these things up and then also account for the interest going out on your loans, right? If you're not using a, um, you know, an A credit source, this could be a significant number. It doesn't make the project bad. It just means we gotta account for it, but you should know how much money is leaving the project every single month and the hold costs are non-recoverable, right? So this number, we understand that, you know, every month that ticks by, we lose this money off the project. So we wanna, you know, keep this cost as low as possible, but also keep the project as tightly, uh, you know, from start to finish as possible so that we incur the least number of hold cost months, right? So a three month project versus a six month project, you're gonna have three extra months of all these costs that they don't give you any profit. Now, a little side note to this is, if you are doing projects in an appreciating, you know, hot market, some of that will get, you know, rewarded by taking longer, the, the market's still going up in value, you don't have to worry about it so much, um, but we don't like to bank on that, that's kind of speculation. So instead, we are always trying to do projects efficiently and quickly and not burn out too many monthly hold costs. Okay, so that's it, that's the whole equation, right? Everything I've showed you up to here accounts for all the costs involved. And now it's your job to break all those costs down and make sure that you itemize them all before you start the project, right? Before you make that offer, before you remove your conditions. And this is what we do. We actually turn the equation around and we wanna do all our research before we ever write that offer. And because doing all that research gives us 
our maximum buy price, right? So if I reverse engineer this equation, I can say that actually the maximum price I should buy this house at is equal to my ARV, right? My future sale price minus all my sale costs, minus the cost to buy, minus the renovation costs, minus the hold costs. And if I leave it there, that gives me a break even number. But if I wanna add on my profit goal of say $25,000, $50,000, whatever my goal is there, that actually, now that equation will tell me this is the maximum price you can buy this house at and still achieve that goal. Going into a negotiation knowing that gives you a lot of power because I can actually start my offer a little lower and work my way up to there in a traditional negotiation. Or if I'm buying in a multiple offer situation, it literally tells me my best and final offer right from day one. So the idea behind this is you can rearrange this equation using algebra in any way you like to solve for any one of these variables. But typically the one we're trying to solve for is how much should I buy this for, right? Um, but you could also know exactly what your ARV is. Maybe someone says, I can get you this house for $500,000. Now you could solve for the maximum rental cost, right? To still turn a profit. So getting really comfortable with this equation and how to rearrange it and account for everything lets you be the smartest you know, house flipper in the room. Okay, before we wrap up today, a couple key skills. Number one, if you, if you really focus on all this that I told you, then you really just have to look at each section of the equation and realize that there's a key skill that you can focus on and improve on as an investor and you will continue to get better over time and write better and better deals, better profitable projects. So number one, always buying below market value and always trying to buy with instant equity. So we wanna get better at finding deals. Where do we find them? Where's our deal you know, hunting network? Uh, number two, we want to get really good at selling homes for even more than they're worth. So anybody can sell a home for what it's worth, but you need a professional real estate team. You need to know exactly what you're doing with your staging and your marketing. And believe me, homes are selling for more than they're worth every day, right? So this skill can actually get you a little bit extra profit on the way out the door. Um, next key skill is planning ROI positive renovations. So understanding from warehouses to where you need to take it to be and making sure that your reno team and your contractors can get that work done on a reasonable budget. This one trips a lot of people up who didn't come into home flipping with a construction background. So if you don't, make sure you're partnering with a really good contractor who does good estimates and will stick to them and stay on time and stay on budget. If you're coming from the construction side and you're really good at that, then you wanna make sure you've got great you know, partners that are good at the money side of the business and finding the deals and selling the deals, right? I've seen that this business is all about great partnerships. Um, then the next key skill is making sure we understand how to renovate the home up to the ARV, not too far. If we didn't miss it and disappoint the buyers, we're able to get that exact product that the buyers will get excited about and pay more than it's worth for. And the second last two, um, accounting for every single one of the costs, not just hoping it all works itself out, but really starting with a great mathematical plan. And then last but not least, only buying winning projects. That's the key skill to focus on if I think, you know, if I say no to 10 projects and then buy one, that's really smart investing, right? So getting really clear on what a winning project looks like to you and then being willing to go no, 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 yes, right? And that's the key skill. So guys, that's the video for today. I think I'm wrapping it up just under 20 minutes, but please, if you liked this video or you made it to the end here, please leave me a comment. Let me know it brought you some value. And of course, subscribe over on YouTube if you can. Um, and we'll be bringing you many more videos like this. Thanks for sticking around for flipping houses for fun and profit. And if there's a topic you need a little advice on or you'd like to chat one-on-one -on -one about your real estate investing, you know where to find me. Have a great day.